Communication is hard. It's often messy and it can be frustrating for everybody involved. She just freaked out. I cannot believe you, Phil! How could you? What is uh, happening? What, what did I do? Are you serious? You are, you don't know. We've had this conversation a hundred times. You know, no, no, I'm not, I'm not doing this again. You tell me what you did. Uh. uh was, was it? What? Uh, no, Phil, no, 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 no. I'm air. going to get some air. We aren't explicitly taught how to do it. We're taught language and speech, but we're not taught communication. Wouldn't it be great if once, just once, I could make my mother hear me? I mean, really hear me, even if it was just for one second. Do you think you and Grandma will ever be able to talk about all the things that you've gone through? No. You didn't even consider it. Sorry. No. Why? Because it would just end badly. It doesn't have to. Uh, it would be like the first 15 minutes of Saving Private Ryan, but at least those guys got to be in France. You've never tried. Oh, no, that's not true. I have tried. I have tried my whole life. But my mother and I, we speak a different language. I talk, I think I'm being clear, and all she hears is blah, 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 ginger. We learn communication from watching and receiving our parents, peers, teachers, etc., who are often just themselves mimicking the ways of their predecessors. Ray, seriously? No. Get up and help me. No. Get up. No. Ray. Listen, you know what you don't understand? I work hard all day. I got a lot of stress. I come home and I'm... We also learn from books and movies. Top offenders in perpetuating this notion of good guy versus bad guy. And we also learn from music, often perpetuating unhealthy relationship dynamics. We as well learn communication from our many influencers those in film, television, radio, government, and those in our social media feed. Did I already say went, this so, morning I didn't oh, care to good. do it? Don't be in it! I you're so this annoying! Perfect! Then care. shut the up! So what if I told you there was an easier way? A simpler way to diffuse tension, to clear the path to resolution, to find harmony from conflict? To me, NVC is this way. In this video, we're gonna go through the who, what, why, when, and where of NVC. It's a lot to cover, we're just gonna do the basics, but even so, if you wanna skip ahead, you can find the timestamps below. Firstly, what is NVC? NVC stands for Nonviolent Communication and is also referred to as Compassionate Communication. It was developed in the 60s by Marshall Rosenberg. It's been referred to as many things, including a language of compassion, a tool for positive social change, and as a spiritual practice. Basically, it's a model for thinking about and having an exchange with oneself and or others. What is the purpose of NVC? By Marshall's definition, NVC is employed to create quality connection that inspires compassionate giving and receiving. He's had success supporting conflict resolution between all types, from bickering spouses to feuding country leaders and everybody in between. Many counselors continue to use his approach today. Why NVC? Well, we live amongst each other. Whether it be family, housemates, colleagues, or strangers, our community gives us our support and our sustenance. Why wouldn't we want to reduce conflict, achieve resolution, work together productively, create harmony, and find peace in our environment? What is my experience in NBC? That is a great question. And I'll start off by saying I'm definitely not a professional, but over the years I have accumulated experience in it and have deliberately sought out education in it because it really just makes me so excited and I've seen the results of it and I see that it actually works. I'll take you way, way back. My first introduction to NVC was eight years ago and the community that I was staying on, I was actually woofing at, they practice NVC. It was a part of their weekly meetings. For me, it was a little bit of a missed opportunity. It wasn't as organized as I would have liked, and it wasn't the education style that I would have liked. I'm very much into the breakdown, like put it on a chalkboard for me. Let me take notes. I wanna study it in a more formal way. So for the longest time in this community, though we would have meetings, it was just kind of something that was talked about and talked around like, oh, we're using NBC style or we're having an NBC meeting. But for me, it was this enigma, it was this like, amorphous blob of a concept and I was so curious about it that I had to pursue it on my own. So that is a big reason of why I'm making this video today is I would have loved to have known what I know now and what I'm going to share in this video 
at the beginning because that would have just made things a lot simpler. I really appreciate that group though because it did spark my interest in NBC and it is the reason that over the past eight years I have pursued education in other means. I have read the books, I have listened to the audio, I have gone to workshops specifically for it to get trained, and I have gone to local weekly practice group meetings where we get together with other people in the community and there's mediator and we go through different examples of how it might play out. On top of that, I have also lived with at least three people now who are practicing NVC themselves, either formally as practitioners or they've been educated as well. So I've had the ability of practicing it very intimately. Over the years, I've really just seen NVC stand the test of time and work with different types of individuals in different cases. So I'm really just here to share my excitement about it and recommend it. But that's enough about me. We'll touch on why I like it so much later on in the video. But for now, we're gonna go into some heads up tips, just things to be cautious about. The concepts and techniques can sound so simple that they can easily get dismissed. It may at first sound robotic and unnatural, but it's like any art or skill where at first you learn the basics, the foundation, and then you make it your own. It can certainly feel and sound awkward at first though. Knowing this, just hang in there. If it's done right, it can be extraordinarily powerful. And I know your question, does the other person or people in the conversation need to know how to NVC? The beauty is that they don't. Of course it helps, but you can use it with anyone regardless of their communication type. You can use it with your inner dialogue and you can even use it with a pretend situation in your head where the other person doesn't even have to be present. NVC mediators do exist. You don't need them to practice, but of course it helps, especially if you're not versed in it. The other likely question is, are there any exceptions to using NVC? In the hopefully rare cases of imminent danger, we may pause NVC and resort to more protective use of force. Not to punish, but to prevent injury or injustice. We then look to return to compassionate dialogue once safety has been reestablished. Key concepts, proper terminology, the differentiation between I feel versus I think. This one in particular has really helped me become more conscious about how I express myself. Though I feel is very much a part of our common speech, it's often used incorrectly. I feel like you aren't listening to me. I feel like they're not actually gonna show up. I feel like he's just doing it to punish me, but I don't know. These are all examples of thoughts, not feelings. Feelings instead are physical sensations or emotional states that arise within you. We cannot technically put the focus on another person when it comes to our feelings. So these previous three examples might be corrected to sound instead like, I feel lonely, I feel anxious, I feel confused. Taking responsibility for our feelings. For better or for worse, no one can make me feel a certain way. In NVC, we separate the stimulus from the cause. Though we may be triggered by a situation, reactions are personal. We see evidence of this all the time. For example, you might clean up after someone. One person might have the response, Oh, thank you. That is so kind of you. Another person might have the response, <laughs> You don't think I could clean up after myself? I'm so irritated. Unfortunately, this transference of responsibility is part of common vernacular. For example, I feel betrayed, wronged, offended, disrespected, unappreciated, etc. These are all judgments on another's actions. They place the onus on another and also create a victim out of ourselves. Underneath, they are hiding a real feeling, a simpler and more personal one. For example, we can see that below the layer of I feel insulted is really I feel angry and embarrassed. Be careful of these pseudo feelings. Let me know too if you want me to do a video specifically on this topic. So if they do arise, use them as pointers rather than resting on them as a final destination. Understanding there is a reason for our and others' actions. All actions are driven by a desire to meet a need. So behind every positive feeling, there is a satisfied need, and behind every uncomfortable feeling, there is an unsatisfied need. This is foundational to NVC. We all have basic needs. NVC being needs focused is one reason why it resonates with me so much. It's very much a similar message to natural hygiene, which if anybody knows me knows that I also like to practice. And so with natural hygiene, we too have these basic needs, not because we're needy or weird or especially lacking, but just because we're human. And if they aren't met, we act off or get sick emotionally or physically. So practitioners of natural hygiene, if they have a patient who's ill, they'd first be detectives and reference the list of human needs. They would ask, are they getting enough water, sleep, 
social time, etc. And we see is similar in that practitioners also see symptoms as signposts. So if somebody is acting off to themselves or another, being violent, angry, blaming, or combative, or if there's conflict of any sort, it would follow that they're feeling uncomfortable simply because they have an unmet need. Because needs are universal, identifying needs is our key to connection. When we hear of another's need met or unmet, we naturally have an empathetic reaction. We imagine what it would feel like to be in their shoes. This is the magic of NBC that in empathy, we make connection. When one feels heard, they soften. They are now more open to hearing the other. Do not underestimate the power of listening and reflecting. These play major roles in the dance of an NVC discussion. Openness to outcome. Being prepared to hear no when you make a request. NVC is not a manipulation strategy to win an argument. Of course, we'd like the other person to say yes, but only if it's a genuine yes. Perspective shift thinking. Saying or hearing no can be difficult. Ease this by considering instead what the person is saying yes to. Would you be willing to help me paint my house on Saturday? No, I'm sorry. I was actually reserving Saturday for myself. I am really in need of rest. What would make life more wonderful? We often get stuck in this game of punishment, the who is right battle. However, when we focus on our needs, our attention shifts to a game of celebration, of desire, fulfillment, and honoring. Even when we look at our unsatisfied needs in any moment, we may as well be asking, what would make life more wonderful? Get out of that loop of, they didn't clean up, they obviously don't respect my space. Instead try, oh, they didn't clean up. You know what would make life more wonderful right now? Is more organization. Do you see how much lighter that feels? NBC is not passive. Guessing what is going on for another is a significant component of the practice. Keep in mind, you don't necessarily have to get it right. To be in a habit of guessing though, is to be in an empathetic mindset. That is to attempt connection with an open channel. This feels more inviting and receptive to both parties. To make guesses is to see the other as a human being and not as an enemy. On the other end, to receive guesses can feel supportive even if they're wrong. Responding to a situation. Observe how you're reacting to an uncomfortable situation and recognize you have options. Just knowing you have choice can be empowering and liberating. NVC references two animals as a representation of behavior. The jackal is a vicious scavenger with low-lying perspective. It symbolizes one who is acting in a life-alienating manner. Competitive, judgmental. A jackal would speak in demands, instill fear, blame, and shame. The giraffe is powerful and gentle, with a big heart and tall neck that allows for wide perspective. It acts in a life-serving manner. The giraffe does not blame, demand, threaten, or judge. They are objective and act empathetically. They seek to make life more wonderful for all. We're gonna explore the four ways one can respond to a situation. Pretend for a moment that you've just come home and your roommate greets you with, you didn't clean up your dishes again. How might you react? In the four ways of responding, the jackal out might sound like, you're always on my back, geez, well, you didn't take out the trash. Ask yourself, are you attacking the other? In this place, you've lost connection that the other is a human being. This reaction is criticism, blame, often anger. The sentiment of your response is, I feel blank because you blank. Jackal in might sound like, you didn't clean up your dishes again. You're right, I just, I can't get my shit together. I'm a failure, even at my chores. Are you attacking yourself? In this place, you've lost connection that you are a human being. It is self-blame, guilt, shame, etc. The sentiment is, I feel blank because I think blank, or you feel blank because I blank. Giraffe in might sound like, you didn't clean up your dishes again. When I hear that, I feel embarrassed. What I would like is understanding. Are you tuning into yourself, grounding in your values? It is self-empathy. The sentiment is, I'm feeling blank because I'm needing blank. Giraffe out might sound like, you didn't clean up your dishes again. Are you upset because you'd like order and cleanliness in this space? I sense you really value those. Are you tuning into the other? It is empathy. The sentiment is, are you feeling blank because you need blank? The idea to me is to strive to operate as a giraffe, both outwardly and inwardly. When our jackal does arise, we can use it, but only as a way to point us towards our giraffe. 
I strive for this simply because life becomes much more peaceful and connective when we find our giraffe. Conflict resolution. There are four main steps when it comes to building the foundation of conflict resolution. Think about using this format to address any interpersonal issues that may arise. We're again going to use that unclean dish example, but this time in reverse. So play along by imagining having a conversation with a roommate who left their dishes in the sink. We start with observation. This is objective, based on what you see, hear, smell, taste, and touch. What might a video camera see? It is not an evaluation, which would come with judgment. For example, your lazy ass left a bunch of dirty dishes for me to clean up. It is not that. It is, when I got home last night, I noticed there were dishes in the sink. Feeling is next. What is alive in you in response to the situation? It is about you. It is not an interpretation of the other's actions. It is not, I feel like you just don't listen to me. Remember to use feel appropriately. Instead it is, when I saw that, I felt frustrated. The feelings list is a helpful resource. Keeping it about oneself assures the others that we're not attacking. This allows them to listen rather than become defensive. Need. Where does that feeling, in this case frustration, come from? It is because which need isn't being met. Careful not to tie a person, location, time, action, or object to the need, as that would turn our expression into a strategy. We don't want to say, I felt that way because I have a need for you to hear me. Unhook yourself from holding the other responsible for how you feel. They are not the only strategy for you to get what you want. What we'd rather say is, I feel this way because I have a need to be heard. In this example, let's say that I had asked them to do the dishes yesterday. The needs list is a helpful resource. This is a thoughtfully curated collection of basic human requirements. The list is helpful because not any need that we might think of qualifies as a true need. It's not a matter of, I have a need for you to clean up, or I have a need to be around less stupidity. We can always use these kinds of thoughts as guidance, as when we distill them down, that's when we reveal the true need. They would be the jackal thoughts pointing us towards our giraffe. When we stay away from a strategy and keep the need simple, we stay empowered. Our need isn't dependent on a specific person or thing. Lastly is requests. Requests are important because they bring us present, away from dwelling in the past, and they move us closer to action. It is our connection with another that determines the quality of their response to our request. For this reason, it can be helpful to start with a connection request, of which there are two kinds. One is focused on you, and one is focused on the other person. Reflection request. With this, we're getting confirmation that message sent was message received. Would you be willing to reflect back to me what you heard me say? What did you hear was important to me? I want to make sure I was clear. Feedback request. We would use this if we want to know what the listener is feeling, thinking, or if they would be willing to take a particular action. How are you feeling hearing what you just heard? I'd love to know what you think is getting in the way of you doing the dishes. Would you be willing to brainstorm with me right now about ways we can make doing the dishes easier for you? We may also choose to move to a solution request, which would sound like, would you be willing to clean your dishes before bed tonight? Requests can be made of another, yourself, or the world slash God. Be sure to ask for what you want and not what you don't want. It's not, would you make sure not to leave the dishes in the sink again? We also don't make demands. There is no power over, there is no punishment. It's not, clean your dishes before bed. A request supports the other's free will. It's collaborative. It's an invitation to participate. We too remain open to hearing no. If no does come up, we see it as a gift. It's information that tells us for the other person to say yes to our request would cost them a need of their own. Through discussion, we can then find a way to meet both our needs. Lastly, with requests, use language that is concrete and doable. It is not, I'd like you to always keep the kitchen clean. This is too vague and likely undoable. Altogether, it might sound like, when I got home last night, I noticed there were dishes in the sink. When I saw that, I felt frustrated. I felt that way because I have a need to be heard. I'd love to know what you think is getting in the way of you doing the dishes. Would you be willing to clean your dishes before bed tonight? These four steps are the starting place for the discussion. It can continue like this back and forth or parts of this process may be included in the dialogue as it develops. The other person does not have to know NVC for resolution to occur. How does it work? Needs are universal. And so when we can relate to another through the empathy of a met or unmet need, we make connection. This in itself can diffuse tension. Once connection is made, defenses naturally lower, weapons naturally lower, and the possibility of resolution opens. Focus matters. 
We keep the focus on ourselves and avoid tying needs to others. It's not about what another person did or didn't do. It's about my unmet need for blank. And we don't make our satisfaction dependent on another person. So it's not, I have a need for you to love me. It's, I have a need for love or touch or attention or whatever it is. When the other person, one, isn't sensing an attack and two, is relieved of the responsibility of pleasing you, they can actually relax enough to hear you. Vice versa is true. We don't make it about ourselves when the other person is expressing themselves. We do not turn their request or unmet need into a personal attack. Would you be willing to tidy your side of the closet? Ugh, you know, I work hard all day. You think I don't contribute? Blah, blah, blah. Instead, when you allow for both people's needs to exist simultaneously and with equal importance and refrain from moral judgments of right and wrong, we create a safe space where everyone can express themselves honestly. We may be unpracticed in identifying met or unmet needs in ourselves and others, but the skill of empathy is embedded in our humanity. It is natural to us. Let's say we found a stray dog and with best intentions approached it, but it lashes out. We likely wouldn't take that bite personally. Instead, we move right into guessing. Oh, it's probably scared or hungry, poor thing. Though attacked, we still seek to understand, to care and desire to help. Remember that humans are the same as this canine. It's just that when we're stressed out, we have our own way of lashing out. In summary, NVC works by dissolving tension through our natural ability to give and receive empathy. This provides the key connection which opens a door and allows a relationship to move forward. Finally, consensual requests support progress on behalf of both parties. Thank you so much for joining me as we geek out about communication. I love it so much. If you too found the video enjoyable or interesting or helpful, please give it a like. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below and I'd be happy to get back to you. I am sending so much love your way tonight. What time is it even? <laughs> this is a long one. Okay, I love you. Bye guys.